what's up welders welcome to another episode of adventures in welding i'm paul thanks for joining me uh today's going to be a really simple episode because i've got an email from a user or a subscriber or a viewer whatever you want to call yourself uh thomas from davenport iowa who wrote in i always talk about arc length what exactly do i mean by that well um the, the main processes of welding that I use here on Adventures in Welding, and probably the main processes that are used um, anywhere, are the arc welding methods. There are other methods such as resistance welding, uh, uh, laser welding, things like that, but we're talking about arc welding. We're talking about arc and electrical spark between an electrode and the material we're welding. So today we're going to talk about TIG welding, our electrode is of course the tungsten in the TIG welding torch and the material we're welding, which in this case is 1018 mild steel. So let me bring you in closer and we'll talk a little bit more about arc length. Alright, first of all, here's our piece of 1018 mild steel. This is eighth inch thick or 125 thousandths. And when we weld, we want to talk about keeping a tight arc length. And when you're welding, there's always going to be an air gap. And that's your arc length. So this is a, a 332nd tungsten. And for a tungsten this size, I like to keep a 16th inch arc gap. Now this is a 16th inch electrode. So if you kind of think about it and you put your torch on top of the electrode right there that is about the gap that I'm looking for now the reason we do that is the tighter the gap the tighter the arc length the less voltage that your welding power source is required to use to produce the amperage needed to melt the metal so the tighter you keep your arc length, the easier it is going to be on the machine and the less voltage you're going to need. A nice tight arc length will produce about 9 volts. The further you get away, the voltage starts climbing. For instance, here's a 332nd electrode. So there's about a 332nd gap, and that's going to create a voltage of around 11 volts. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it really works out to be quite a bit harder on the machine. Now, other reasons are aesthetics. The tighter the arc length, the better looking the weld is going to be, the better the penetration is going to be, yada, yada, yada. So, instead of me talking about this with these nice tight close-ups, let's do some welding and show you what we're talking about. All right, here is the nice tight arc length, trying to keep about a sixteenth of an inch as I'm welding here just barely keeping the tip of the electrode out of the molten puddle. You can also see that my filler wire is always very close to the electrode so it stays within the argon envelope. These things make for a really nice weld. Also we're putting less heat into the metal since there's less voltage and that of course is going to equate to less distortion. All right, now we have a crazy arc length. I mean, it's at least a quarter of an inch away. I'm forcing myself to keep it as far away as I can. And you're gonna notice that this weld takes considerably longer to complete. The first weld with the tight arc length took 34 seconds. This one takes 48 seconds. So we're talking a difference of 14 seconds. That's 14 more seconds of heat of about 10,000 degrees that we're putting into this metal, stressing it, causing distortion. And when you look at the results here in the next clip, you're going to find that they're just not as pleasing as the first uh, go around with the tight arc length. All right, folks, here are our finished welds. Let's examine them and look at the differences between them. This is our tight arc length weld. Bring in pretty close here. 
you can see the very nice ripple pattern, the stack of dimes look. And it doesn't look burnt. It's nice and shiny. And now if we look at the heat affected zone, which is, you can see the line right there, this area here to here. That's about a half inch total. Now, let's look at the long arc length. You can hardly see any differentiation in the ripples. The weld looks dull and gray. Here to the end, we're almost completely melted in. And that heat affected zone is well over an inch. And if we flip it over, you can see we began to melt through. So guys, there you have it. Um, nice tight arc length puts considerably less heat into the metal, which causes less distortion, less damage to the metal. A long arc length puts a lot more heat in, makes for a cruddy looking weld. I hope that answered uh, some of your questions. Please feel free to ask any more you have. My email is tigmaniac at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me on this adventures. Cut. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Adventures in Welding. Now get the hell out of my shop. I gotta go do something or other. Cut. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Cut. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Adventures in Welding. Now get the hell out of my shop. I have to go practice speaking English because apparently I have a problem with it. <laughs>